appeal process if they didn't like our decision or the board's decision? The one thing I think that we might encounter is more people wanting to talk and us being somewhat limited to time given our schedule that morning. So we would invite people to come and to sit in at our next meeting when we put it on the agenda? Well, I suppose that'll, mm -hmm. they certainly can. But but we'll have it happen. We, we were in and out of uh, Hillcrest in less than 15 minutes. Yeah, but I, I think that was... It's a pretty happy-go-lucky group. But yeah, I, I don't think it was very... They could group. come to our subsequent meetings at that point. They could follow on. Yeah, they're all going to be on the I just want to be prepared to be able to... Sure, of course, no, of course. And I'm sure they'll ask, and we'll certainly tell them when the vote There's a possibility I might not be able to attend. Someone else is still trying to work on my schedule. Well, we would miss you, of course. Do I we, understand. That. Will Will we be able to tell them specifically at that time, specifically what date we're going to do it? Will we, will we have votes on that on the 24th as well, or do we want to? Do we want not want to do it on the 24th? Oh, sure. Nick, do you have some thoughts on that? I thought you're going to have to make a decision what meeting you want to have it at, and do you want to have all six streets come in at the next DPW meeting? If we make the vote, does that then mean we do not plow this winter? Correct. Yeah, yeah. So, to me, the sooner the better. It, it, seems, really it seems like otherwise we're paralyzed forever. We yeah. can no, never I, go forward. No, I, I, I think no, the sooner just, the better. I'm, 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 I agree. I just think it'd be nice to be able to tell them <coughs> at that moment that we're going to be voting at this on such and such date so they can think. Right. Right. Well, well, staff seem to be a little reluctant to have it be on the 24th. Did I read no. your... Oh, no, no, you're fine? Okay, I, fine. I, I, I thought you were going like We'll this. get chairs and whips and we'll kind of... Yeah, no, that's I wasn't here. sure if you wanted to tackle six. Four, four, six, two, one. Well, I think we tell them we're going to try for an X date, but the onus is on them to look at the agenda because we don't know what else will come up. Does that make sense? Yeah, I, I guess what we'll have to do is limit public input to a, you know maybe the first thirty minutes of the meeting. Um, I mean, I don't see how we can open the floor up for discussion six times. Uh, the city council wouldn't, I don't think, let people... No, you're right. Maybe a, like a, the way they do it, which is open with a public comment, period. Right. And we're not the final yeah. vote anyway. Right. On this issue, we are. We are. For unless they, they appeal it. Unless they well, petition the city council. I, I, I think it's important that we do them all on, at the same time and on the 24th because if our decision is not to plow them this winter, then we need some time to come up with alternative arrangements. Um, and as far as, as speaking, we might want to make the decision on how we handle it when we see who shows up. Two streets show up out of six, then we might deal with them separately. But if six, all six show up, then a group discussion might be appropriate. Okay. Well, that's that's kind of my. Those are my thoughts. Um, I'd like to come out of this with a, a motion on each street, um, and some of these are easy, and some they're going to get more complicated real fast as we start moving. You know, we're at Hillcrest, if we think of that as the top, and there's a one or two that are just, they're flat-out driveways. So if we assume that they're just as easy in the other direction, but as soon as we start chomping into the pile, it's going to get real hard. We'll be standing at some streets and think, oh, man. But for those ones that are in the middle, what kind of criteria are we going to use? I mean, we're not, we're not going to be able to, I don't think we're going to be able to use the sort of you know, Supreme Court and pornography thing. I know when I see it, I think we're going to have to have something a little bit more objective than that. Mm -hmm. Well, my thought, and, and I'm, I'm totally open to other thoughts on this, but my thought is that we don't, on the other hand, want to have a formula which could be applied by anyone by merely 
Do you have this checked? Do you have this checked? Do you have no? And then and then you say, yeah, you've got a score between fifteen and twenty. You're a street. Yeah, no, that's fair. That's a fair point too. That's uh, a fair point too. I think we need a little. Yeah. So we want to take into account are the utilities. Take into account is it a dead end? Is it a throughway? How many houses are on it? Uh, what's the condition of the roadway? Does it, you know, does is a does it meet reasonable width requirements? Is it laid out in the street? Well, some we know are not laid out, but the city council recently appropriated twenty-three thousand dollars that we can use to begin surveying legal work, to begin whittling down the pile, and presumably <coughs> by the time we worked our way through the twenty-three thousand dollars, we'll have a pretty good handle on how much, what a reasonable number would be to finish the rest. And I think we also have the the ability to say that we have done all the snow removal all these years and that's a huge value so that's all a positive side and we should really emphasize that in our discussions in our preliminary discussions here because if there is going to be any any negative feedback we want to say like you know we've been struggling with this for a long time and we've been costing the taxpayers money because we didn't want to do this I'm just I'm just a little bit concerned about how we're going to be able to formulate an answer to the question why not when they ask us specifically why not this street? Well, because I, I, that's that that to me that's the that that sort of argues and I I totally hear what you're saying. Then you about do the parental that. thing because we said so. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I think the, uh, for me the dead ends <clears throat> don't look too good. And I don't know if there's a number of people affected that changes that, but you have to look at, okay, we're talking about taxpayer money to plow the street, so who benefits in the city? If I can only go down there, turn around, and come back, because it's a convenient place to turn around because I forgot something, it's not a huge benefit. Would it help if we, uh, sometime back I emailed Ned and Jim, a list of criteria. Yeah, I was going to say. I sent out I, a I list of criteria. I've never heard threw, anything I about it. I made a list. Um, but could we perhaps work on shaping that list up, the criteria that we think are important considerations? Sure. And, and the big one, and this goes back to your original, I think at the time, you know, I'm much more empirical than like, okay, five points for death, take away five points is that you have the public good as an intangible. And that's that's what comes in, is that if there is no public benefit, ultimately, even if there is some things on one piece of land that's done on another land, public good trumps. Okay. I also think it's comparing um, similar private ways to similar public ways. So you may have a public way that looks very much the same, and it's also a dead end. So I don't think it's gonna. I don't think there is gonna be a hard rule. No, I, I think there's gonna be a lot of comparing. Mm -hmm. um, the pavement management program, the decision matrix within that program, probably has some clues for other uh, criteria that might yeah. be good. Well, it just looks at pavement conditions. That's all it looks at. Oh, well, I thought yeah. it took into traffic counts. Is it, it does, but we don't evaluate private ways. I understand, but. As there's the list I sent you, plus mm -hmm. there might be a couple of criteria in the pavement management program that would be could be in some way used. <coughs> so we're looking for a, a, a list of criteria to be considered. And others might come up while we're talking. Right. Yeah. Because you're, you're right. Public good is in there somewhere. And it's intangible. Yeah. But it does will guide our discussion. So that it's not. Mm -hmm. I think that's the way to frame it. It's points that will guide our discussion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that. Because okay. I, I'm, I'm, I totally get what you're saying about the checklist. Mm -hmm. Totally get that. Okay, great. So we'll meet here at 8:45 on Saturday. <coughs> mm -hmm. Mimi will have the chase car. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be going to the electronics uh, thing at JFK. Oh, yeah, I don't know what I'm going to do about that. <laughs> All right, stormwater and flood control. Well, that's what that's what Rosemary was saying. Is to just drop it off early. 
So I think our last meeting went well. I think it was well received by the public. I haven't watched it on NCTV, so I don't know quite how it looks to the outside world, but... You and I look very handsome. Right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. It looks really good. I actually went and watched the first 20 minutes because I was 20 minutes late. And it actually came across pretty well. So now we're being tasked for the next thing, which is coming up with a number of different ways to have leadership meetings. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
unbelievably fast. It was Everybody said it is Terry stunning. stopped. Send stunning. him stuff because he can get it really fast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, lots of attachments. Well, that's, that's faster than anyone here has at home. I can make a here. phone call online. I can, I can call <laughs> long distance. No, online. no, no. I'm talking about the Comcast motor at your house is not that fast. <clears throat> I was blown away. So now that I've been turned on, that puts it from the phone to here. Oh, it doesn't even get stuck. <laughs> But anyway, I'm sorry to hear about the beach, Jim. That, that sounds like it was awful. It was terrible. Yeah. <laughs> so what did you do? You, you couldn't watch TV. Yeah, I know. You know YouTube? Watch the show. Facebook. No Facebook. He mm. doesn't watch TV at home usually. <laughs> He'll think I'm weird. <laughs> well, perhaps you could give us a solid waste planning. Oh, no, that's, that's, that's us, us again. Solid waste planning. We have two things that I think we're doing. Number one, we talked about getting that committee going again. But close. Landfill Closure Transfer Station Operation Committee. Yes. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Put the clue. <laughs> What's the acronym again? <laughs> there do seem to be more and more people. I'm getting emails and comments. Question, and people, it's heating up as a question on people's minds. What's going to happen? So it's timely. Yeah. Have, we, have we gotten the... Have you reviewed the bids on the hauling? We got some bids. Excellent. We opened up bids today for hauling and disposal. Oh, today. Yeah, we had uh, the bid opening was last supposed to be last week, and then we issued an addendum, extended out till today. We opened the bids at two. We received uh, six bid packages, um, some from haulers, and a couple from. Uh, uh, we have one from from a disposal facility only, so we've got a bunch of prices to work work from. They were interesting. Um, I'll put together a, a spreadsheet summary so that you can see how the fees came in. Um, one thing I thought was interesting was that we didn't receive a bid from Do So Trucking, and none of the none of the haulers that submitted were, were proposing to use Valley Recycling as the transfer station. So there was a lot of talk for the last several months, years, about the importance of that transfer station um, to you know, the future solid waste management here in the city, yet we have a possible three-year contract sitting here in this pile, and they weren't one of the bidders. So I found that pretty interesting. Well, should our committee reconvene next week? Is that appropriate? Well, we dust off our old discussions and decide what further deliberations we need to conduct before we come back to the board with a recommendation. So you'll be getting... Is that us? The three of us. You'll be getting information from Karen about year-to-date income from the bags, from recycling, kind of looking at what we can afford, or at least ballparking what we can afford moving forward. We didn't get into that level of detail last spring. It's probably appropriate now. We had some cost projections at that time for different analysis that we were looking at that didn't include projections on bag sales and what the revenues would be. So we had reached a pretty good point, I think, with um, estimated budgets. One of the questions that came up was the cost of having city staff do the hall, <coughs> maintaining a, a truck, doing some of that work. Uh, in the future versus having you know, a private company to do it and obviously at that time we didn't have any actual bids to, uh, to do a comparison so we've got more information to do that type of comparison now and bring some of those deliberations to conclusion I think. I know from uh, talking to Karen that generally revenue is <coughs> declining. Um, newspapers are getting thinner. The, the amount of recycling is kind of going down. Sales of the bags is, I think, trending down. Um, so I think it's important to be looking at the revenue. And, uh, I'm not sure it would make sense to assume that revenue is going to grow. Right. Well, we look forward to you. Well, we need, we need to come up with a date. Mm -hmm. Jim, do you want to offer some stuff to us uh, tomorrow or something? By email, or you want to do it now? You do it right now? What time are you proposing?
Friday would be awesome. That would give me four days next week to prepare the summary of the bids. The 19th. The 19th. And that will be enough time for Karen to pull back together revenue. Well, we'll give her a few days to do it. Commitment at 9:45, but uh, otherwise I'm free. We need at eight. Eight o'clock. 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 Do you want a little bit of an update on what the reuse committee's up to? Sure. Um, we've been um, looking at uh, possibility. Well, we've had a, we have an event coming up this weekend. It's the arts uh, event that, and the electronic recycling at the JFK site. And uh, then we've been looking to have a temporary site up at Florence Community Center. We know that the building up there is in transition, so we're talking with the mayor's office and the committee that's making those decisions. So it's moving, but not fast. I am, if I might interject, uh, sort of blown away at how putting a Facebook page has gotten a huge response from people and media. Cool. Is that what, is that what prompted it? What? The Facebook page? The Facebook page is what we get those emails about so-and-so likes Northampton reuse, and there's probably three to five a day. So on Facebook, <coughs> saying they really like the the um, reuse committee work. So well, they just like your page. No, I don't think so. I mean, it's okay. It's it's fine. There was a young woman that did it and put it together, and uh, I have a photo of her doing it with her son on here, but. But it's it is it's really getting the word out there, and it's also people are finding it, and there's collaborators out there. I reposted it online, and I got likes from people who aren't even in Northampton. They just think it's a cool idea. Mm -hmm. yeah. <coughs> so what what's the what do I look for? Uh, Northampton reuse, I think. I'll uh, forward just. Oh, not you. Okay, that's part of the reason I re I repost these things is to see how it works and stuff like that. Yeah. We tweeted the debates for the first time or as yeah, organization last yeah. week, and that was it was a riot. <laughs> a lot of fun. Uh, okay. I, I, mean, I have no idea what it is. You know, I'm just. <laughs> Jim, would you like to talk to us about the civil engineers? Oh, I would. I've got five, got five minutes. We'll sure. We'll yeah. Because we're running ahead of schedule. We're ahead of schedule. Yeah. I need. I got a delay here, so my dinner will be ready by the time I get home. <laughs> Just drive around the block a couple yeah, of times. <laughs> walk around the block a little bit. Splash a few puddles. So, um, this this coming year, I've been elected as the president of the Boston Society of Civil Engineers Western Mass Branch. So it's basically a civil engineering group here in in Western Mass, part of the state that holds professional programs and things for engineers like myself and Ed. Uh, but one of the uh, meetings that we've been working on this year is um, a documentary screening for a film called Liquid Assets. It's a um, story of our water infrastructure. So it's a documentary um, that talks about the demands, sort of the, um, the issues facing cities and towns across the United States and demands on uh, infrastructure and the role of uh, water infrastructure, public health, economic prosperity, and, and uh, ensuring a good quality of life. So I've been coordinating with um, folks from the Picker Engineering Program at Smith and from the Center for Environmental, Environment, Ecological Design, and Sustainability at Smith to co-sponsor an event with um, the BSCE, which is a screening of this film. And we've picked the date of number, November 15th in the evening at 6.45. Um, so the, the documentary is a, is a nice film that was prepared a couple of years ago um, in part by I think Penn State, um, which had, had a role in that. But um, if, the, if the documentary was not exciting enough, we have a discussion panel at the end of the documentary that includes
which our own Terry Fallane. Oh, yeah. 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 So uh, Terry, it, Broadway. it will be at Smith College at the Weinstein Auditorium. And so it'll be the film, a panel discussion, and then a reception afterwards. So Terry will be sitting on a panel with a representative of the DEP. I'm waiting to hear who they've selected to help with the matter. Um, should find out tomorrow. And then we're also looking for a rep representative from Time Bond. Um, and uh, the folks at Smith College are in touch with Time Bond to get someone to sit on the panel with some of the money. So that's that's it. You're all welcome to attend. What um, time on the 15th? It'll be start at 6.45 p.m. So it'll be, it's advertised to all the engineering group that I'm involved in, but we're going to, it's a public event. So we'll advertise in the Gazette and in other places just to try to get, um, you know, with the public to turn out and, and do the documentary. So we think it'll be a nice event, and you're all welcome to attend. And bring your hard-hitting questions for Terry. Okay. Five minutes up. We're done. Well, yeah. you have the flyer done. I can shoot it around to people if you, if you want to see it. Anthony, yeah. Bike lanes. Excited about South Street? Yeah. Rumble cool. Strip? I'm not excited about the one strip, but I'm excited about the thing. Okay. Yes. No. Uh -huh. Nothing. All set? Yeah. All set. You already mentioned South Street for me, so. Okay. Well, I, but you can add to it. Sure. You didn't expand on it for me. Well, um, contracts out. Actually, contracts are starting work uh, tomorrow morning on South Street, mowing the roadway and preparing all the new pavement markings going out there. Also part of it will be a, an experimental inlaid thermoplastic. We had money to do it for the entire project, but we have a thousand, a thousand foot section that we'll be doing and evaluating that. Um, also part of the project is work being done up at Beaverbrook Estate up in Leeds, part of their traffic calming program. Great little project. Good way yeah. to end the year. Um, one thing, a couple, couple of items related to the, the Ryan Reservoir Dam. Um, Ned and I are in the process of reviewing a draft phase two study that um, DZA has done for us that identifies improvements necessary for the dam to come into compliance with the dam regulations. These improvements will be expensive and we'll, we'll be at one of the future board meetings presenting sort of a summary of, of that report. In the meantime, Ned and I have a meeting uh, at the dam site tomorrow with the Office of Dam Safety. We've taken an interest in the dam because of the size of the structure and the amount of water in the impoundment. Um, GZA engineers will be on site doing, a, doing an inspection, so the Office of Dam Safety staff uh, requested to be present when the inspection is done. So there's a sort of a heightened interest by the Office of Dam Safety in the dam, and at the same time we have a report that outlines a lot of improvements are necessary for that. So we'll be, it's just a little preview, we'll be talking more about that. Okay. Who from GZA is going to be there? Uh, Matt Taylor is the project manager for us on the dam. Is he from the Springfield office? Or? He's from Norwood. Oh, okay. He's the guy that came out for the Roberts Meadow dam. Right? That's right. Mm -hmm. Nice guy. He is. I thought he was one of the more impressive engineers that ever made a presentation for us. Yeah, he's a, he's a good one. We're happy to have him working on our projects. Mm -hmm. I just have a, a question. Where, where's the mirror going on this new building committee? Is that, is that no? He hasn't reached. Yeah. I met with the mayor today about that. He's hoping by the end of this week to make a formal announcement who will be on the new committee. So he's waiting for a call back from one particular resident, and if that's positive, the committee moves forward. Is it his thought that? This will be no one involved here, just like this? Uh, no, it actually will be uh, the six members of the original building committee, and then two oh. residents from the public and two city councilors. Okay. Oh, so we're, we'll reprise our role. Is it, is it focused only on our building? Or is it, I thought it was all buildings. Or, or unknown buildings. Well, it's our buildings. It's a matter of which project moves forward first, which phase. That albatross of the total amount is still hanging. Uh, well, according to HKT, the construction costs went up 14% last year. Oh, excellent. So this is probably going to be $30 million 
dollar project now instead of twenty six. Well, but let's start talking about the sixteen million dollar project, which is eighteen or nineteen. Yeah. Okay. So I, I haven't heard anything. You know, because none of the original building committee members have heard anything. I don't think. No, we're just waiting for the mayor at this point. Well, I, I was encouraged that he was going to resurrect the idea. It seemed pretty dead for a while. And everyone knows about the guys next door fixing the trench. That money was approved. Yeah, I was going to ask for status on that. They're actually um, <clears throat> we're actually getting plans together so that we can uh, actually get a building permit to do the work. As far as the work in the garage floor, the storage facility, the work that needs to be done in the mechanics bay is a little more uh, out of my professional league anyway, especially with the mold remediation. Right. So I talked to the mayor about that again today, and basically we've got to go through the designer selection board to get that fixed unless somehow it can be determined to be an emergency, or we might be able to get a waiver on that. No. Clorox. Yeah. Well known for it. Uh, Ro? No. I have nothing. I have one thing. Okay. It's all right. Up. Let's keep it going. I had it all along. I just didn't know I had it. <laughs> <laughs> um, when you started talking about the dam stuff up at Grand Reservoir, uh, Paradise Pond Dam is going to start getting repaired uh, next week. So on Monday there'll be a partial drawdown, which will look like a full drawdown that will go on for about ten weeks and maybe a lot longer, depending upon flows. <coughs> early January. No ice skating this winter. And they'll probably not. They haven't had ice skating for years. Yeah. Um, yeah. You, you never know if we get enough rain in January. Yeah. Nice. Anyway, they are going to be doing. Uh, an open cut excavation on a portion of the Irfan Dyke. There's 800 feet of dam that people don't know is dam, um, but it will include some open cut down about 10 feet, um, and then coming back up and lifts uh, with new material, um, and then the entire 800 foot length on the uh, upstream side will be reshaped. Um, they'll get uh, some geotextile fabric and uh, riprap armor 18 inches above normal pool and. And then repair the flashboards and defer some other stuff until some other time, maybe in a couple of years. But it'll be a big construction site for a while. Do you, you have a contract director selected? T Ford, the T Ford company. Yeah. I forget what town they're for Eastern. Eastern, yes. <coughs> there was, uh, we only had two bidders, and they were low by a lot. What's the name of the other company now? We had four people show up for the bid. The numbers were very far apart, and both numbers were over our budget. So Oops. there's some um, there's some um, permeation grouting that we were going to do on a portion of it that we're deferring. So there's new tour drain going in, there's a new boat ramp. There's a uh, trash boom going in, going in upstream, which will be good and help the flash board survive and floaters. And we won't have the big dam against the Mont Bridge anymore. Which caused some serious scouring in the last uh, in Irene, and uh, so if you want to see what a dam repair project looks like, there's a small dam that's about to be repaired. I'll be there. Yeah, we're gonna have plenty of time to see it. All right, <coughs> are we done? Motion to adjourn. Yeah. Oh, you're looking for? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Let's roll. You're all in favor. All right. All right.